Hey, it's Pete with GCI Turf, and welcome back, part two of my little uh, demonstration on how to calibrate a sprayer. And if you missed part one, I'll put a link to that down in the description so you can you can check it out. This is going to be the hands-on part of things, actually, how to physically do it. So, in part one, you learned about variable and constant. Uh, there are m many variables involved, but we have to have four constants and they have to be consistent in order to accurately calibrate a, spreader, uh, a sprayer. Um, your height of your spray nozzle, uh, and that kind of goes in with the width of the spray pattern. They have to be the same throughout the entire spraying process. The speed in which that sprayer nozzle travels has to be consistent or constant, and then the pressure that your pump is putting out has to be consistent so that you know that you're putting out the same amount of product at, at a consistent flow. So you're going to need uh, one, two, three, four things in order to accurately calibrate your sprayer. Okay, so first thing, obviously, you need a sprayer. And in this particular uh, example, we're using one of our spray trucks, uh, which has uh, double 3 8 400 foot hose reels, 500 gallon uh, and 250 gallon setup. Uh, we do that for in case we're spraying different products throughout the day, we can switch back and forth. And my choice of uh, spray system is the Kappa 43 gear reduction. It is a diaphragm pump. Uh, we love them. We have many of them and they work exceptionally well. Uh, you do have to replace the diaphragms from time to time. It's not a big deal. Here is your uh, pressure regulator. And in, in this case, you have to actually activate the pressure. And what I mean by that is when you turn the, the pump on and it's running, it has a constant agitation, taking the taking the fluid from the tank, circulating it through the pump, and putting it directly back into the tank. That's the agitation part of it. Well, in order to activate this, when you see this little lever here, you simply push that to the right, and you will hear a audible difference in the engine because it's under more strain because it's now uh, working these diaphragms open and close and, and, and working those diaphragms back and forth is what's pushing out the liquid. So you have to have a spray pump. Uh, you have to have a, uh, this is a two and a half gallon jug. I am actually calibrating this truck to two gallons per 1,000 square feet. So I need this to hold a minimum of two gallons. Uh, if you're calibrating for a gallon a square, a gallon per thousand, obviously you would only need a gallon jug, or this would work as well. Uh, I need a measuring device. Here I've got my roller to measure out my 1,000 square feet. Uh, I'm out here in the parking lot at the shop, so I'm just going to use uh, this marking paint to mark off my boundaries for the 1,000 square feet. And Well, that's a road microphone pouch you really don't need that to calibrate so don't don't buy that for calibration it works good for the videos though and what Jacob's gonna do is come over here he's gonna he's gonna uh, turn his, his nozzle on to turn the pressure on and he's gonna come over here and stand still and he's gonna create his spray width he's just gonna stand right there and his normal natural spray width now, why would I do that? Well, I'm, I'm setting it up to figure out my thousand square feet, and I'm trying to make it convenient for him where he can walk one pass, turn around and come walk right back up. You'll see that in a minute. So let's go over here and uh, let's measure how wide of a spray pattern he produces. Okay, so you see I got my tape measure laid out. And uh, Jacob's a big old boy, so he's got a nice wide spray pattern. And looks like we're at roughly 12 feet. Now, in reality, it's probably more like 13. But since on the end of your, your spray pattern, the droplets get quite a bit smaller, we're going to allow for that, that foot 
is going to allow us for a half a foot on each side for overlap. So we got a 12 foot spray pattern. All right, so we got our calculator here. And since we're going to go, since Jacob is 12 foot wide spray pattern, we're going to double that, which is 24. And then we need to find out what a thousand square foot hey, try is. Try 24 times 41.5. That's close enough, 41.5. So we need to measure out 24 feet wide by 41 and a half long. That'll give us our thousand square feet. Is that 41 and a half? All right, stay right there where you're at. All right, so I'm gonna mark me a little boundary here. We need to go 24 foot that away. All right, right here. All right, Jake, if you'll go up there to that side and give me 24 down this way, this is the way I'm gonna square it up because he probably didn't walk a perfectly straight line there. So we're gonna square it up on this end down here. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna stay in line with this marker and I'm gonna come over here and we'll meet him right in the middle. All right, there you go. We got a thousand square feet now. All right, so the difference in spraying with a truck and spraying off a machine, there's one significant difference. The, the, the machine, your height, your width, and your speed are gonna absolutely be consistent. That is, if your machine is running properly, it will. Well, with a uh, truck, we have a variable. That would be him. Since human beings aren't perfect, we tend to flaw a little bit here and there. So that's why training is so important in practice. And what I mean by that is, if Jacob, uh, Jacob, grab a gun over there for me. All right, so, okay, so this is what I mean. So Jacob, pretend you're spraying the yard. All right, he's keeping a pretty consistent width. Spray it wider now. Now he just changed his variable, the variable kicked in. That's what I'm talking about, the human error. All right, now raise your hand. He just changed the height. So those are things that uh, when, you're, when you're practicing your spraying, you have to practice well so that you maintain that consistency. That, that, that can mess a, a, uh, your calibration up or how much product you're putting on the yard simply because uh, you raise or lower or widen your spray tip. And the other thing obviously is speed. If he walks faster on this yard than he does on this yard, then of course he just changed his whole calibration. So that's that's the uh, a big big deal with a spray truck. You 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 don't want to just throw anybody in one. You want to make sure they're trained and make sure that they understand all this stuff so that uh, they're not spraying your money away, right? Okay, so obviously we're spraying water here, so there's no gloves and no rubber boots involved, but uh, words of wisdom when you are applying products to the yard, uh, you always wear your personal protective gear, your personal safety gear, which would be in with spraying, you wear rubber boots, rubber gloves, that kind of thing. All right, Jacob fired up. Uh, I've got a stopwatch here, and what we're going to do is time Jacob spraying this 1,000 square feet. You just go when you get ready and I'll start it. Consistent speed, consistent spray width. He's putting out the water. Got down to the end of the thousand square feet. And 
here he comes stop watch let's stop it right when he gets about there 21.95 so we'll call that 22 seconds now what we're going to do is come over here to the jug all right you ready set go and we're going to run it for 22 seconds and we're going to see how much liquid is in this jug Okay, so we ended up with a gallon or maybe a touch over a gallon on the thousand square feet. Now, since I don't want to change anything about Jacob because I want him to be comfortable for the day, I want him to keep his natural walk, his natural stride, his natural spray pattern, all that I want to stay the same. So we need to change something to double our output. So what I'm going to do is change that with the pump and the pressure regulator. I'm going to increase the pressure so that we get more uh, volume of liquid coming out the end of the gun. And we're going to re-walk re this off and re-time it again until we get to the two gallon per thousand mark. Alright, so we're going to go at it again. Whenever you're ready, Jacob. We'll see how good he is on this 22 seconds. See how close he gets. Twenty-one two five. I'll take it. Close enough. All right, you ready? Go. Let's see where we're at. There we go. Two gallons. So now we know that Jacob can walk this thousand square foot area in roughly 22 seconds. And then we put a stopwatch on it. We filled up the uh, jug in 22 seconds and got two gallons. So that tells us that we're taking two gallons of liquid and we're applying it evenly over 1,000 square so feet. let's say Jacob calls in sick one day. <clears throat> of course, he never does that because he's an exceptional employee. Can I put Billy Bob in this truck? Or can I run this truck? Or can Dustin run this truck? Or whoever? The answer is no, because he may not be the same height uh, as, as, as Jacob. He may not hold the gun the same height. He may hold it lower to the ground, higher to the ground. His natural spray pattern may be wider or maybe shorter. We just don't know that. Uh, it depends on the person. He may walk faster, walk slower. So this truck is calibrated to Jacob. Now, uh, the other truck is calibrated to another technician. And then when I get my spray system put on the 250, that spray system is calibrated to me. So it's very important with a spray truck that you have it calibrated to the actual person that is going to day in and day out run that thing. Now, let's say Jacob takes off on vacation and I need to run this truck to fill that void while he's gone. Well, I need to calibrate this to me before uh, before I can use it. So just a good rule of thumb there, whereas with a machine, you don't have to do that because the machine is gonna go the same speed no matter who's on it, as long as it's got some type of regulation system on it that won't allow it to go faster. All right, so another good idea for those of you with spray trucks and with machines, because machines can fail from time to time. <coughs> we calibrate these things on a weekly basis and we have a very quick way of doing that we take we don't have to actually drag everything out set up the thousand square feet and 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 walk it out and time it and all that kind of thing we now know jacob walks this thousand square feet in 22 seconds so all we do once a week is make sure we're still at 22 seconds to fill up this two gallons and 
so why would you do that? Well, the pump may get weak. Uh, there's a number of things. It's a, it's a, it's a mechanical device. It, as it gets older, it, the diaphragms wear out. And so you want to stay on top of that because the beginning of the season, your calibration may be different from the end of the season, even though you hadn't touched anything. So you have to calibrate that thing on a weekly basis, especially with a spray truck to make sure that you're being accurate and uh, you're applying the props correctly because at the end of the day what the calibration is all about is number one you have you have uh, told your client you're going to apply a certain amount of product to their property throughout the course of the year and integrity and honor are very very important in this industry so you want to provide that you don't want to you don't want to be a liar or a thief so you make sure it's calibrated so that when you're, you, you tell these customers you're giving them X amount of product for X amount of dollars, you're actually giving that. And on the flip side of that, you, you, want, your, you want your equipment to uh, have some level of integrity toward your pocketbook too. So you don't want to go out and be putting over applying all this extra product and, uh, and losing money like crazy. And of course, your quality. Um, like I said, Yesterday, in the other video, most, uh, product, most products have a rate that you apply, and those manufacturers have tested those rates on, across the board, and they know what works and what don't work. That's the whole reason for the label. The label is your instruction book. It's your Bible for applying products. So you read the label so you know how much product goes on how much area, and you stick to it. Don't don't vary from that because when you do, it just opens up the door for all kind of trouble. Okay, so if you've got any other ideas, like a backpack sprayer, a boom type sprayer, anything like that, you might want to learn how to get calibrated or how to calibrate it. Uh, put a comment down below and let me know, and I'll be glad to work on that for you because I just I eat this stuff alive. I love this spray, this whole idea of spraying a yard. I just I thrive on it. So leave a comment down below and I'll, uh, I'll make a video on it. Thanks. So I hope you like this. This was really cool. We had fun doing this and, and showing you how to calibrate and uh, like, subscribe, do all that crazy stuff that you're supposed to do. And you guys have a great evening.